Okay. What a mess I have here. Trying at a different angle. I guess I should have waited to push the start button until I got back in my seat. All right, y'all, um, bear with me. I'm trying a different angle. And also, I'm still recovering from some pain. And um, so, things are not great. But I wanted to try and do this video. I usually do a live video, but today I'm doing a YouTube video. Um, so, what are we making today? We are making a Christmas stocking. This is the 5x7 tiny little guy. And uh, he's adorable, but he's tiny. This one I did use fusible fleece. And I do not recommend it um, for a single needle machine. My machine had a really hard time. I actually had to finish it on the sewing machine. But I wanted to highlight um, one thing. So this one I did... Some people like the top stitching on the back. Um, and with the traditional faux, I like to call it a faux top zipper. Because you don't get a real top zipper unless you tear the stabilizer down. But for my traditional faux top zipper, um, you don't get the back stitching. So in order to have that back stitching, or the top stitching on the back, you have to top stitch it. And then when you fold it over, you get a tiny little pucker there in the fabric. But it's an option, and it's not really that different. It still looks cute, but it does create a little bit more bulk when you're sewing it. So we're not gonna do it that way for the new one, the one I'm stitching out now. And I'm gonna try really hard to follow along the instructions and tell you which step I'm on. I heard from one viewer that they really like when the video matches the steps. So I have the instructions on my um, iPad here. So, um, oh, I forgot to upload the, um, correction. Um, this does not have the outline of the stocking, but it will when you get the file. Um, so I messed that up when the testers told me. So the cast of characters, I need a zipper. I'm going to use zipper tape. Uh, let's see what color should I use? I think I have a greenish color in here that would be very pretty it's like a tealy green so we're gonna go with that one uh, and this is from cam snaps I think it'll work it's gonna be fine yellow would be nice but you can use a regular zipper is fine you want a number three zipper I did use a number five on this I don't recommend it it was very hard to stitch over and um, I don't recommend it especially for a single needle machine so definitely use a number three. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my zipper ready. I should have done that beforehand, I apologize. If you do like my videos, please subscribe to the channel because I can't do YouTube live videos until I have <clears throat> at least a thousand subscribers. And it would be fun to do YouTube live videos too. Let me move this stuff out of the way so I can measure my zipper. I think I need nine inches. But let me double check. And since I'm using zipper tape, it's, it's I like to try and not use waste it, but I don't want to have my zipper in the way either. So I try to make sure I have a nice. And I'm diff, unlike other zippers, other zipper bags, we are going to use tabs on this bag. And the reason I use tabs, zipper tabs, is because I um, the side seams curve upwards and I'm not 100% certain that it would have a nice effect when you sew the seams with the zipper tape in there. So I'm just using the fork method. I'm gonna try it. I was able to do this without the fork the other day. And you just put the zipper head in between the tines of the fork and then you pull this tape apart and you feed it into there. So let's see if this works the first time. I'm not an expert at this and there is a little, a little gizmo that you can buy <laughs> and attach it to your work surface. And I'm pushing it against my chest. I don't know if I'm in that view in the camera, but that's just what I find the best. Now I've already messed it up. As you can see, it's off kilter. 
so I need to redo it, take it off and redo it. So try this again. We don't want it off kilter. So you want the curved out of, of the zipper at the top. And then you feed in one side at a time. I like to get that side started. And again, I'm just pushing it against my chest and using that for leverage. And then put the other side in. And you wanna try and make sure they're about equal when you start pulling it down. Oops, <laughs> that wasn't good. Okay, just drop my fork. So we're gonna just try and do it this way. I am so sorry, I should have had this ready for you guys. But at least you can see the toll of trying to do this zipper tape. And it's not as hard. You get the hang of it. Um, I watch some sewist, and that's all they use is zipper tape. And man, they just flip through these zippers, adding it on. And this fork is not the best because it's got really thick twine tines. And I'm not about to bend them because it's my good dinner fork. And I had a different fork here. I really need to go to the thrift store and buy a, a fork just for this purpose. You need one that's skinny and that you can move the tines on and twist them around. Okay, let's try this again. Sorry. So, put it in, put this side in. And if you really have a struggle with, you can cut off um, some of the teeth on one side and that, um, that helps. Oh. This, this zipper pole is kind of skinny, so it's not wanting to stay in here, is the issue. It's like, okay, there we go, I got it. So it's a little bit off, but that's okay, because we're gonna be trimming it anyway. So, see that? So I wanna make sure that I have the top of the zipper on the left hand side of my bag. Now, I always do left to right, but you may want to do yours opposite way and that's quite okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put tape down my zipper tape and you wanna make sure the center seam of your zipper tape is over the center stitch line of your zipper placement. So this was step one, stitching out this placement line. I'm gonna tape that down here. And then what I do is I turn it around to me and I walk the zipper down the line, adding tape on the sides to hold it in place. Now these skinny, skinny, these shorter zippers, you don't always need the side tape, but it helps so it doesn't come loose. So what I'm doing is I'm just walking this down and I don't have good lighting here. I hope you guys can see better than I'm seeing. And I put a piece of tape on this side. I'm using this transport tape because it's easy to stitch through and get out. And then I walk down and I put a piece on this side. And the reason I do this with every single zipper is because not all zippers are exactly one inch. I digitize my zipper replacements for one inch. But even then, from design, I try to use the same design, but sometimes, even though I try to do it exactly correct, um, it shifts a little bit in the software. And so one inch could actually be off a, mil, a millimeter or two. So if you just line up that zipper with the center zipper pull, you're gonna be okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tape that in down. You wanna make sure that zipper pull is moved out of the way of your placement line. And I covered my placement line up, but here it is. Okay, now I'm gonna run step two. And I apologize, but my machine has been being a little B-I-T-C-H to me. So she's been coming unthreaded a lot. So uh, we're gonna just do the best we can today. Okay, this is just gonna tack down the edge of the zipper tape so it does not move and I'm sorry about the dog the child is supposed to be taking care of the dog now I can see already this is puckering right here so I didn't tape it down enough so I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to pull this tape up and I'm going to pull this out a little bit I don't know if you guys can see that but if you were up close you can and now that I'm taken off you can't see it so but it was just slightly puckered there 
and that would make the zipper not nice. So I pulled that off and just retaped it. Oh, see, my I'm gonna go back and redo that. It didn't take down here. I don't know if I somehow maybe my tail is really short. I'm wondering if I somehow changed the settings and shortened that tail and didn't mean to. So I'm gonna back up a few stitches and get over there because um, it's important that our zipper is tacked down well. Okay, start that again. Now one thing, if you use a Janome 500 or the equivalent Elna, when it's doing the carrying, it's going to be moving this presser for all around. And you want to be very careful because you don't want to get um, it stuck on the hardware. So you'll see me oftentimes reach back and as soon as I hear the thread cutter stop, I lift up that, um, I lift up the back presser foot up high so it's out of the way and it'll carry over and you can do that with this machine and look even though I redid that it still didn't lift up over there but I think it's okay so we're going to run the placement for the right hand side zipper tab and then after we do the right hand side we'll move over and we'll do the move the zipper pole and move over and do the left So that was step two was the zipper tack down. This is step three. And I'm gonna go ahead and wait until I do the tack down, but we are gonna go ahead and cut off the excess zipper pole to try and keep that out of our seam allowance. So now I um, need to find my little zipper tabs right here. They're just one inch by two inch. I'm gonna place the first one face down and I'm gonna go just a bit past that placement line. And you'll see they're a little bit wider than um, they need to be just to give you some leverage. And again, I'm gonna tape that down. I think I'm going through a box of this tape every two months. Okay, make sure that's tight. One thing that, um, I only have a 7511 needle in here, and I probably will change to the 90 later on in the bag, but one thing is um, that thicker zipper tape, the other issue with it is when the needle goes over it, you can't really see the zipper tab, it gets stuck in there a lot, but it gets a little wonky. So now that I have this secured, and I know my zipper's not gonna come undone, <clears throat> I'm gonna come in here and trim off that excess zipper tape as close to that tack down line as I can get it, the first tack down line. And that's just gonna help take it out of our seam allowance. Okay, and now I'm gonna fold my zipper tab back and I'm gonna tape it down, lightly press it. Don't fold it too tightly. You don't wanna see those last stitches. And then we're gonna go ahead and run our top stitch. You won't see a whole lot of this zipper tab in the end, um, but it just, you see how now we're gonna have fabric in the seam allowance and not the zipper. Okay, so now, see this is what I'm talking about. I have to make sure it's out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tape off and move my zipper pull down. Now, what happens, you see how my zipper now is up. If I don't do something, when the presser foot comes over there, it's gonna get stuck and go like that. So we need to level the playing field. So take a piece of tape, use the same piece, lay it centered right over here so that, um, so that it's holding that seam, sorry, my work phone, holding this down until we, until we um, tack it down and that's, I always call that a bridge. You're creating a bridge for the presser foot. Okay, let me get my instructions out so I can make sure we're following along. Okay, so this was the placement for the left. Uh-oh.
somebody's texting me about uh, testing. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's see. So that was color step six. So now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna trim the zipper tape and we're gonna attach the tab and then we're gonna run color stop seven and see how that came out because I wasn't being careful. So you gotta be very careful. So that's why I'm not gonna cut that loose until I tack this down just to be safe. Oh, Grayson. Somebody's being very um, needy of attention today. She's worse than the human child because the human child you can bargain with and buy off and say, hey, I'll let you do this, that, if you stay out of the way. Dog, not so much. I do hope I have enough zipper tab. Let me just respond. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and trim off the extra zipper tab tape. I'm mixing up these words. I'm so sorry. Zipper tape. Now I've digitized this so that when we add our materials, it's going to stop um, midway through. So you have to pay attention to the instructions as to where the zipper pole should be because we do not want our zipper pole to get stuck or we don't want our presser foot to hit our zipper pole or a needle or any of that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay, so, all right, so that was um, color stop eight. So now we're gonna turn this over to the back and add our lining and all the cutting instructions are in the PDF for you. I try to be a little generous on them. This uh, exterior panel. This is the back. I'm using different fabric for the back. And this is the lining. And they are um, the same size. Just to make it easier. It could actually be um, an inch shorter, but I made it the same size. Oops, helps to raise the presser foot. So we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna put our lining so the raw edge is aligned to the bottom of the zipper and the top is gonna to come over here, right side down. It's gonna get stitched down, then we'll fold it down so the right side will be facing up after we fold it down. And then if you need to, if your hardware is up here, roll it down, fold it down and tape it in place so it's out of your way. I don't need to because this one, um, the frame is over here. So I'm gonna take my clean edge and I'm gonna center it over here and then again we're going to tape it down because if we don't tape it down it will come loose and you don't want that to happen when you're doing a very long expanse you might want to even tape it down in the center but i think i'm okay here and see how it wants to fold over i just let it do that while i turn the hoop over now we're going to take the piece that we want to be our front um, and we're going to tape that down. Now, I don't have directional fabric, but my material is colored like this. So I want, oh, well, this seems short. I want the focus to be the bluish dots. So I'm gonna put those up here. So we're gonna lay it down. And now let me double check my instructions. Make sure we have our zipper pole in the right place. Yes, the zipper pole should be all the way to the right. And it is. And now we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to tape this down and center it over there and tape it. I like to keep my hands the heck out of the way of this machine. So I do use a lot of tape. I know some other people don't, but I do. I don't know 
certainly tape down this center, but the zipper pull does kind of push it up a little. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down so that the zipper pull doesn't push it up. If you're using one of those skinny little um, size three, the standard, like Coats and Clark or whatever, you won't have that issue. It's gonna be a tiny zipper pull. I'm gonna keep an eye out here though because your machine may have color sorted your um, pieces. And why did it do that? Okay, see, I've already discovered there's an issue that shouldn't have done that. Okay, what's going on here? So I'll have to double check that file. Nobody told me that when they tested it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. It should have stopped here and do that. It'll be fixed by the time you do it. So now I'm gonna move the zipper pole all the way over to the left and finish that seam. And make sure that your bottom doesn't come undone when you're playing around with your hoop. Ow, I just hit that needle on my finger. Okay, now it's gonna complete the seam. But yours won't look like this. Yours is gonna start from the center. I don't know what, I, I must have flipped that around. Yeah, see it stopped. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and leave our lining up in the back. It's gonna stay up for the next few steps. I'm such a dingbat. I have to redo this. Oh my gosh. One of these times I'll get this video right. I forgot the color band. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, this is the truth. I keep it real. I forgot something. Need to read the instructions. So uh, that's what the seam ripper's for. So start this over. You can leave the lining alone on the bottom. So if you're using a accent band, which I am, that has to go down first. So this is actually not gonna go like this. So ignore that whole beginning of this video. Uh, if I can be magical, I'll fast forward through that section, but I'm not sure I can figure out how to do that on that thing. Sorry about that, everybody. One of these days, I'll get a video done without any mistakes. I really thought this was gonna be the one. I don't wanna restart it though, because how to do the zipper tabs is kind of important. So I don't wanna restart it and have to redo that section. At least I didn't get much farther along, right? Could be worse. Could have had this half done and realized I forgot the band. Um, this is one thing that um, it's worthy of noting right now. If you don't want the band, you don't have to use the band. And what I just did would be exactly how you would do it. But if you don't want the band, you're going to skip the next couple of steps because it's going to put a decorative, um, the decorative stitching right there. And you don't want that on there if you're going to um, have the band. Okay, so start this again. Sorry, so sorry. So very sorry. Okay, get all this loose stuff out of here. Okay, so the band is gonna go down, um, right side down. And I see I my lining came undone. The band, the accent band. So in this case, I'm using vinyl. Now, you could actually probably, um, do the raw edge thing with the vinyl like this. I just don't like doing that. I don't think it looks as nice. It's hard to get it lined up evenly, so I don't do that. I do a traditional stitch and flip with all of mine. I did one bag like that, my my first double zip bag, and I just really don't like it. So, but you could, it's up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down like this. Okay, I'm gonna use a couple pieces of tape because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape down this piece here first, and then I'm gonna tape this on top, right side up, so that it comes about, you have to feel it with your fingers. So it comes up to about where the zipper tape is. And we're gonna trim off the extra. So we'll go ahead and tape this down and let's run that step again. So it's actually two steps. OK. 
Okay, our zipper pull is on the right hand side. And I think I got that. Okay, child two. So sorry about that. Somebody rang on the phone and it messed up the video. So sorry. I hope it didn't mess up all my video. Okay, so where were we? We are doing our top zipper panel. We're gonna move our zipper pull over to the left and finish this stitch. Okay, and now because I had it positioned pretty good, I don't need to trim any excess off here. But if you have yours sticking up higher, um, this bottom panel, then go ahead and trim it off right here. But I didn't, so I don't need to do that. So now we're gonna fold this down, just like you do with any other bag. Make sure it's even. So I'm gonna pull it down here so I can have it against a hard surface and use my finger, fold it down. And I'm gonna put the tape down here to hold it in place. I'm gonna get a bigger piece, but I'm gonna hold this right now, just for right now. Okay, again, make sure your lining is still out of the way. We're not gonna change our lining. Take this tape out. And I want this to be nice and firm. Down, okay? And now we're gonna go ahead and do the trim um, here. Uh, it's a placement slash trim. If you are doing fabric, for this band, uh, a woven fabric that has um, a fraying edge, you wanna keep this up out of the way, stitch this down on here as a placement line, and then fold under the seam. So this imagine this is fabric. You're gonna not put fold this down yet, you're gonna run it as a placement line, then you're gonna fold under this to meet that seam. And it's in the instructions. But since we're doing vinyl, we're not gonna fold it under. It'll be too thick. We're just gonna trim it. Of course, I messed it all up. So we're gonna do, um, basically we're doing kind of like an applique. So we're gonna run a placement stitch and then we'll trim it up to that line. And you wanna trim with good scissors and try and keep it as straight as you can to have a nice finish. And I think I might actually have cut this perfect that I don't even think I have to trim it. Yep, I did. Perfect, I didn't even need to trim mine. So, show you that. So I don't even need to trim it. Oh, but my lining did get caught. Doggone it, Kimberly. <laughs> you guys, kill me, please, somebody. Okay, this is okay because this is gonna get tacked down later. So, let me fix it now. Hey, Grayson. Okay. And I didn't, I, I even told you guys to check and make sure. And I still messed it up. Okay. Keep going. So I'm gonna just go ahead and fold this a little bit so I can see it. And if you're using cotton, um, you could actually pin it from the front. So I don't have any pins right here, else I would do that. I think I'm gonna, since I have this extra here though, I have these little clips, I'll clip it. So whatever you have to do to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm not worrying about it because it's gonna get stitched down. When we fold it down, it'll get stitched down. So I'm not too worried about it. But I'm gonna remove the tape now. Oh shoot, I used the wrong, okay, I think it's okay. This tape can 
the um, leave a residue on the glossier vinyl, so be very careful with that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, run the decorative stitching. So let me look at my PDF, make sure what step we're on. Hey, Grayson, can you come look at the phone and make sure it's still recording? <laughs> oh my goodness. It is. Thank you. Okay, so that was step 10 and 11. So now we're up to 12 and 12 is a decorative tack down and this would be if you had folded under, see this is the seam, and if you had folded under this, then um, it will tack down your seam. But it's integrated into the decorative stitch, so that's fine. So we're gonna run 12 and then 13. And then we're gonna fast forward in our design to add the knee before we do the corners. So actually, um, this is a step that um, you would skip, skip these steps if you were just doing a single um, body stocking. Because if you were using, um, um, you don't want this on the material if it's, it wouldn't look right just sitting in the middle of this. I'm not using any fleece in this one. I forgot to mention, I do have all the exterior panels. Um, I added deck warp on with them. So it gives a little bit of body to the stocking. Alternatively, you can use Deckelville Light. So I'm gonna lift the presser foot up. And so now we're at step 14, but I wanna go ahead and fast forward to the very end so I can add my name. Now, you could actually integrate that into your software, but my software was not agreeing with me, so I didn't do that. There's a lot of steps, y'all. I'm sorry about that, but it's basically um, needed to do the partial stitching so that you don't have to worry about um, I'm going to be very careful when this is done because it's going to try and go to center but by adding this extra steps in here you don't have to worry about stopping the machine and moving it the zipper pull so this is going to take a few minutes here to stitch out this name I'll try and fast forward through it but it is what it is And since I'm already getting a commercial videos, and then I'll um, resume it when the scene is done. Okay, guys. Now that it's all done, you guys didn't have to wait for five minutes, and I got to clean up a little bit of mess off the floor while we were waiting. Um, the problem of having your test area in your living room. So, look how pretty that is. So, nice and pretty. And then we're gonna do another decorative stitch up here. So make sure my back is okay. That was a smart idea. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. <clears throat> so we're gonna go forward to 14. I wish there was a way you could fast forward without having to wait for the hoop to do all this work. I don't know of a machine that does that though. My multi-needle is the same thing. Okay, so now we're up to 14 and we're gonna do the left accent heel placement.
I'm using this teal sparkle canvas. It's really great for applique because it's really thin. So I'm gonna go ahead and the left heel is not as big as the rest, but I just made it the same size for easiness for you guys. So there's a line. It's kind of hard to see, I know, but um, it's there. And then we're gonna just place our can our vinyl so that it's at least a half an inch above on either side of that line. And I cut it generous enough so that you can do that. Yeah, that phone interruption earlier. Not good move Kimberly's part. I had texted my friend and told her to call me when she had a chance. <laughs> and she was calling me because she had a chance. Oh, Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. This is what happens when I'm not feeling well. I'm going to put a corner down all over because this vinyl wants to roll up on me. And I don't want to worry about it coming up while it's stitching and getting messed up. And I obviously cut my material off because... Well, it's going to swoop down in here, so I guess I didn't. But um, if you are not really great about lining things up, by all means, add an inch to the dimensions of the cutting so that you have um, more comfort level. I try to um, be a little bit comfortable with the set the stitches, but everybody has their own level of comfort in lining things up. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and trim up to that placement line right there. But I do not want to cut into that. And this is when these duckbill applique scissors are the best. So you put the duckbill side on the side you don't want to worse cutting the fabric. And I'm going to keep this tack down here. We're going to cut straight off when we get over to the side. So we're gonna come in straight to that seam and we're gonna leave the excess material in there because we don't want that raw edge to show up in our... So I'm gonna go ahead and cut right over here. We don't want the raw edge to show in our seam. So if we cut like straight like this, then we risk that not getting caught up in our seam later. I don't know if there's much to save on this. I'll save it though, just in case. I'm gonna retape that down and cut the tape off. Okay, um, so I did a pretty good job, I think. See, the only thing about doing these videos like this, I can't see the screen to make sure I'm showing you guys. So that's why I like doing the live videos, because you can reverse the screen so I can record from the front camera. So now we're on step 16, and then we're going to do the same thing over here. I did do it in two different sections because I don't know what vinyl you're using, and you might want to use different color vinyls, so I did it in two sections. There's always a method to my madness. I could have just made this one big color stop and you could have put one piece of vinyl down here and then trimmed it, but then you'd be stuck with having everything the same. This way, if you're using cottons, this would look so adorable if you use some foam sponges and left the edges a little bit frayed. In that case, I don't think I would use the satin stitching. I would just use the tack down stitch and go over it again. I have a really exciting, um, I have a really exciting one of these I'm working on. My first test didn't work out exactly like I wanted it to, so I have to redo it, but if it works the way I want it to, it's going to be really cute. You guys are going to like it. It's really important that you get close to that applique because you don't want your vinyl sticking over there. The edge, and I don't, I think I might have actually should have trimmed a little bit closer. I'll show you. Let me go ahead and run the placement stitch for the next guy. And you'll be able to see him a little bit better because it's on the yellow. Oh no, it looks like the stitch. It looks like the stitch covered up all the satin after all. Or the canvas. Yeah, it did. So. 
right, let's get our other piece of canvas. And again, we're gonna line it up so it's about a half an inch beyond. Tape would be a good idea to have ready for you, Kimberly. I'm gonna go ahead and steal this tape. Remember, this is glossy vinyl, so we want to make sure we don't leave this tape on here that long. I think the pink tape or blue masking tape would be better on this glossy vinyl. Anything that has a glossy surface, it seems to not do as well with, but we're gonna be cutting this off anyway. All right, so now we're up to step 18, and this is gonna be the tack down. And I don't know why when my frame is back here, it's really hard to get it back on the hoop. Might have to do the little applique step. There you go. I have to be careful because one time I pushed this when I did that. There is a step. If you have this machine, you arrow down over here and there's a little step that'll actually pull this all the way down for you. And it's actually what it's for, it's for applique. I'll show you on the next step. So now it's tacking it down. And it did not tack down. Huh. Okay, we have to do that again. What happened? It didn't pull the bobbin thread. Weird. I've been having all kinds of issues with this machine though. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and manually try and pull the bobbin thread up. Oh, that thread just cut totally off. Okay, try this again. Oh, I said I was afraid. So I had to come in here and I don't know if it's just because these kind of pre-wound bobbins I'm using. These are the ones I got that the lady gave me with the Janome 350E. They work, but like they do this. So they don't work. <laughs> okay. So let me show you that little trick with the applique. So I'm gonna keep this off. I'm gonna hit the arrow down here and there's a little bracket with an arrow. I'm gonna hit that and then hit it again. And then say, okay. It's gonna pull this guy all the way down here, like in home space. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the hoop on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, hit that again. Okay, and now it's gonna take it back to where it left off. So if you have the 500E or the Janome equivalent, it'll do this for you. And yes, that's driving me crazy that those are not, it should have just stayed up here and positioned it to start the next step. So I probably change that. I That stuff drives me crazy. I don't like the hoop moving any more than it needs to. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and get my cutter in here and get start off from the side. I have my duck bill to that side so it's protecting my fabric. I'm cutting as close to that placement line as I can and trying not to cut into the stitches. But this canvas is perfect for this purpose. See how close I'm able to get it? Hopefully you can see that because it's not the best brightness in here. Okay, why do I have a piece of thread there? I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Bring this down. Right now it's gonna do the satin stitch and then it's gonna go up and um, do the placement. I believe the placement for the D-ring is next. Okay, so next we're going to flip the lining 
down and then we're going to do the accent at the top of the accent panel. This is saying nine minutes left. That's a joke. <laughs> That's stitch minutes. One of my testers is so, having so much fun. She's already stitched out three of these. This is a great scrap buster, especially the five by seven to give to little kids. They can keep their lunch money in it. Again, don't use the fleecing. It, it just makes it too thick. But they're so cute. And um, I didn't push out the bottom very well on that one. It was hard because it's so, the seam is so thick with that fleece in there. But if you have a lot of Christmas material to use up and a whole bunch of zippers, make them and donate it to your local kids' drive. Alright, let me tape this little corner down. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and leave the zipper over there and it's gonna partially do this and then it's gonna stop so we can move the zipper. Oops, might help to lower the presser foot, Kimberly. Oh, sorry. We need to pull our lining down first. Just told you to do that. So what happens is if you don't pull the lining down, I'll, I won't do it on this one so you can see the difference. If you don't pull the lining down, it'll make the lining a little bit higher up inside the bag. So I'll show you what I mean. So on this one, I pulled the lining down. And because I pulled the lining down first, the stitches, you can see them on the inside. But what happens if you don't do that, I'll show you. to stop. Don't take anything off the hoop. Just lift up your foot if you have to. I probably didn't need to lift up the foot because this is actually a small presser foot. But lift it up if you have to and move your zipper over to the other side. You do get one little jump string there as it doubles over. But that's okay. Much better to have a tiny little decorative element versus risking hitting your presser foot into that zipper pole breaking a needle and throwing your machine off timing and all that good stuff. You don't want that to happen. Okay, so now let me show you what happens here. Since we did not pull the lining, ooh, that was fun. Since we didn't pull the lining down, now on the back, you see that decorative stitching went in the back, but when we pull the lining down, now it's a little bit closer to the zipper teeth. So it's your choice. Either way, if you don't want to see the decorative lining or the decorative stitching, then pull the lining down after it. But just realize that it puts it a little bit closer to the um, top there. So when your zipper pull, depending on how thick of a zipper you're using, it might get in the way. All right, I'm gonna pull this tautly. I finger pressed it. Don't pull too hard because you, it's not very secure on the back here. Flip it over. Okay, so now we're ready to do our back. So the same thing we did before, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over and get our back lining. Okay, and this time we're gonna line it up with the top zipper and actually this is going to be lying down for just a few minutes and then we're going to fold it up out of the way we're going to tack it down and then we'll be folding it out of the way so it doesn't get hung up on the side seams okay so we're going to tack it down and this time we're not doing the back stitching the top stitching on the back so we're going to do two rows of stitching here so we're going to take our um exterior back and we're going to lay it down here. Zipper pole should be on the right hand side still and it's going to go lined up to the top of the zipper. Not the zipper tabs but the zipper. Now mine's not cut evenly so I'm actually going to let mine be a little bit above that because I didn't cut it evenly. 
And you can see I did not do a very good job of fusing my Decker bond because it's actually coming loose right here. In my defense, I ordered online from joyan.com and they did not include the instruction panel with it. I was like, what? How am I supposed to know how to do this? Because it was yardage. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and it's gonna run two stitches. We're gonna do partial stitches. And this is where, if you want the top stitching. Okay, so we're gonna stop, and move our zipper pull over. Okay, if you want top stitching on your back, you're gonna take this off and you're gonna fold this up, crease it, and stitch. We're not doing it, we're gonna skip that step. So we're gonna leave it here and do our partial and move our zipper pull. So make sure that didn't come loose. And you'll get to see what the difference is and how it looks when it's all done. I do two lines of seam here, uh, slightly ajar because traditionally you would be doing the regular stitch and then a top stitch, and it gives you more strength to your zipper tape. So move our zipper pull over to the right and continue. Okay, now for the next couple of steps, we're up to 26, we're almost done. We're gonna go ahead and Pull the top up, but before that, we're going to flip it over to the back of the hoop and we're going to flip our lining out of the way for right now because we don't want to get our lining stuck in the last few steps of the side seam. So, finger, cre finger crease the lining, tape it out of the way, and again, make sure. It's pulled securely here. Do the little thing if you have to with the um, clip. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and pull. See, there's no top stitching here, it's okay. We're gonna finger crease this against a hard surface, pull this out, and now we're gonna do our placement for our D-ring. Here we go again, I lost my... I lost it! I had it all here, what did I do with it, guys? Anybody see? Oh, here it is. So I'm using a piece of the white vinyl, and I learned this trick from Lindy or somebody, and I adhered a piece of gross green ribbon to the back, and it just gives it a little bit more stability. And then I'm gonna put a D-ring this is three quarters inch. If you're using cotton, then you would wanna do a three inch by three inch square. Uh, I think I have one up here. So if you're using cotton, this is actually a half inch one, but you would do um, three inch, fold it in half, iron or finger crease it like that, then open it up and fold each side into that half iron your finger crease and then fold it like this. And then I have a sewing machine, so I like to top stitch it. If you don't have a sewing machine, then you can skip that step. Now here's the important thing for you. Every machine is different. So I have a placement line here for my um, D ring. I need to make sure that my presser foot can get past this D ring hardware. So if I put this D ring like this, my presser foot is gonna get stuck on there when it does the last seam. So I can't have it that close. So I'm going to keep it a little bit out. Usually an inch is a good rule of thumb. 
if you're using a big multi-needle, you have a little bit more flexibility there. Make sure that it didn't come undone. And so right here's the, press, the placement. I'm going to tape this down. And I need a bridge because this is a thick piece of material here. If you don't use a bridge, your presser foot's going to get stuck. So tape it over an inch. And then you want your tape to be right on top of that placement line so that you know your presser foot is going to be gliding over the tape. And then when you take the tape off, be very gentle because <laughs> it can pull the stitches out. And I always have to be careful and make sure that that doesn't pull that down. Okay, we're almost done. So now we're going to leave our lining in the back up. And I'm going to carefully pull this tape off. And now we're going to go ahead and fold our exterior back down. Oh, my machine just has tape all over it. Don't you love that? Oh, today is the day before Thanksgiving and I'm filming this. I just realized for two seconds here, I haven't felt any pain. <laughs> it's like, yay! Don't worry about trimming that right now. We'll trim it later, but I'm going to trim that little string. Okay, so leave your zipper open. I'm going to close it off just a little bit because it's dangly, and I don't want to worry about it dangling into here. But I'm not going to tape it because it, I don't want the tape residue to get on here. So fold this down. Make sure this is still out of the way. And then you're going to go ahead and tape this down as much as you can all around so it does not move while you're stitching. And if you add some straight pins, which I don't have down here, you could actually just pin out of the stitch area. You'll know it's out of the stitch area because remember I, I forgot the outline, but you'll have that when you get the file. It'll be on there. So then you'll know you'll be able to look at the back and make sure it's out of the stitch area. The general outline will be exactly the same as the um, final seam. Okay, so this is going to start, with, and I hope this works, guys, because this is where I had trouble with that machine. If it doesn't work, I'm going to switch to a 90 needle. I mean, with that other stocking. Okay, so I'm going to start here, and we're just slightly above that, below that, and then we're going to go ahead and, um, oh, it worked. Good. We're going to go ahead and um, finish this, then we're going to trim out the zipper tape, the stabilizer behind the zipper tape, oops, and then we're going to do the last step. So this is a double, and you'll see it goes just under that seam because we don't want the lining to get caught. Sometimes I don't do a double, um, but because of the way we're doing this lining, I wanted to make sure it's really secure. And I'm going to show you. It's not going to matter in the final picture, but you can see what I meant. See how up here it actually got a little bit off jar because of the, the thickness of that. So you won't have that issue in a multi-needle machine. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this away first. And what I like to do is use my seam ripper. Move this tape. And man, I cut this lining way too long. I don't know what directions I was looking at. So I like to get in here, and if you just get it underneath, right there, and you can see the blade of the seam ripper underneath the poly mesh. You could have used um, cutaway on this, but then it gets stuck inside the seam. And just cut through there. I mean, it gets cut stuck inside the bag and then see you can see the blade and then just hold it down and just glide it right past all the way to the other end and then it, it's a little trickier coming back because you don't have as much tension now in the hoop because we cut this side loose but it's the same concept so just work that loose if you don't feel comfortable using the seam ripper, then get out your tiny scissors. 
it's a little bit harder. You can do the duckbill scissors, but it's a little bit harder, I find. And then again, we're just gonna go ahead and start that. I like do this jaggy thing, and once I get it started, I can do the slice. And you, the ball's on top, and that ball's what's help protecting that the blade doesn't cut into the fabric. And then slice right along. And then this part, I do get the scissors and snip this little piece off. All right. See, that's all done. So now we can fold our lining down and do our last step. This step is gonna go ahead and stitch all the way around. So let's pull this as um, snugly as we can, not too snug, but just enough to hold it down. And I can already see you up there, if I don't tape those little corners down, they're gonna whack a doodle when I go to flip this over. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape up here. This tape holds for a little bit. I actually um, got this from Reen Wilkerson. Um, she's the queen of embroidery, embroidery garden. And um, I had tried a different kind of medical tape because everybody said medical tape, medical tape, and it was horrible. And she's like, no, you have to use this kind. And she's like, I can get four or five uses out of it. Now it's probably gonna go wonky again here, but that's okay. So now it's going to go all the way to the top with the lining. It's going to stitch around. And then it's going to leave an opening for us to turn the stop. This is actually my first time stitching up the 6x10. Um, this is one of the first times that I, like, did not stitch out a stocking or a pattern before I sent it to a tester. Because anybody who's followed me knows I've been down for the count for the last two and a half weeks. Female issues, I won't gross you out in case there's any men out there. Okay, now before we unhoop this, this is our last step. Remember, we're gonna skip that number 30, the red step, because that's just to stop us from the recentering and getting hung up anywhere. Before we unhoop this, we're gonna flip it over and make sure everything's stitched neatly on that side, because if it didn't, we can fix it. All right, and man, did I have way too much fabric. I don't know what Kimberly was doing. But now we're good. So we can go ahead and unhoop it. Since I use poly mesh, I don't need to worry about um, cutting away any, or tearing away anything. I am gonna go ahead and broadly cut off this top because it's way too long. And that's a nice large piece that I can save to do reinforcement when I need to. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, stitch this, put this guy down to home and get it out of my way. So we're all done. All right, so I'm also going to go ahead and um, remove the tape that I can find that might be reusable or might get stuck in the bag and I'll forget about it. So I don't think any of this is going to be reusable. But you don't want to leave it in the bag. The fun part's gonna be now getting this file to upload to YouTube. So I wanted to release this pattern tonight. I probably will, but y'all will have to be patient on the video. Um, I have a couple things I need to fix. Okay, so I think, let's see, we have tape in here. Let's remove this tape. That's gonna get cut off anyway, but that's okay. All right. And I'm not worried about, normally I like to leave a little bit extra of the tab, but I stitched over that really well, so I'm not gonna worry about that today. And you can see, if you go to the back, where our opening is. So I'm gonna start cutting back here first so I don't cut off that opening. I wanna leave a little bit extra there to be able to grab into and fold back when we turn the bag right side out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut here first so I can make sure to leave a little bit more of a tab. Okay. So now I have a little bit more fabric, so when I fold that in, it's gonna be able to work. And now I can go ahead and flip it over to this side where I can see the color better to trim it. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch. I prefer to do a quarter inch 
with cotton woven. So, and actually, this is a really good time to get out those pinking scissors and um, trim down the edge. If you don't have pinking scissors, then you wanna notch the curves. And I'll show you in a second what I mean by that. And that's how you get a nicer um, curve. But I'm gonna use the pinking scissors because I have them sitting right here. Oops, I got a little too close there. All right, so now I'm coming into the part that I left the opening for the tab. So I'm making sure my scissors don't cut off my tab. They're on top of it. All right, I'm going to just put this in my pile right here because there is a lot of material that I can keep using in that pile there. So now I'm going to come in here where my ending is and start from this way so that I don't cut off my tab. Now, I only need the tab on the lining. So I'm going to go ahead and trim out the rest of it. So we just need the tab on the lining. So we can go ahead and trim this, fold the lining back, and trim this to the same as the same depth as the rest of it. Okay. So that's how that looks. I'm going to trim the top off. Make sure you do not cut into your zipper tape. You cut into that zipper tape and your zipper is going to be compromised. Okay, I'm going to cut into these little notches right here and trim them off a little bit. All right, and if you are not using pinking scissors, um, then you want to just do a little notching like this, some little triangles, all the way in around the curves. And I shouldn't be using these scissors to do that. <laughs> So again, you just do little notches like this and get, see there's all that vinyl is in that seam and everything is in there. So it's really thick and you know, it's not going to make a nice curve. So I'm trimming out as much as I can without cutting into the seam. I'm getting about hungry here. I know I, I want to eat, but I know my son's going to veto it, but mom's going to be like, too bad. That's what I want. <laughs> my son would eat at Raising Cane's every day if you let him. Okay, now I'm going to get these pinking scissors, and I'm going to go around the edges all the way around. I'm going to do that off camera so that this flies doesn't fly all over my sewing machine. I'm going to do it right. I have a little bin sitting here, so I'm just going to bend it right into the bin and it's kind of hard to get over the vinyl strap so I'm going to skip that part really I just want to pinking the curves is what you want to get trimmed out and if you don't have pinking scissors then just do those little notches all the way around and I'll show you when I'm done sorry I'm off camera but it's not gonna work for closed captioning nobody's gonna see me but I don't want to spray all these pieces over my machine. And um, that's what happens when you get these, use these pinking scissors. Sometimes it does that. I have a really cute bag that's coming up. You guys are gonna love it. I gotta make a mis fix on it because I <laughs> goofed it up myself. You guys aren't surprised about that. Hot mess express. But you know, I'd rather I find these mistakes when I'm testing. And I like to do a lot of my testing live because you guys see the struggle that it goes through. So when you make a mistake, you don't have to feel like you're an idiot or that you're in the wrong business because I've been doing this for a while and I still make mistakes all the time. So, oh, shout out to Deb up in Northwest Ohio my friend actually ran into her at a farmer's market or craft fair or something like that and she knew me and it was really exciting for <laughs> my friend she was like oh it was so neat she knew you and she followed you and she said she really likes you because you keep it real and i was like oh that made me feel so good because i don't i didn't start out being like this i didn't mean to feel like a hot mess express all the time but it worked out that way and 
it makes me feel good that people don't mind it. I mean, I look at other people, like my famous, you guys know I have that girl crush on Ricky, um, Gardner from String Theory. She's amazing. I only hope to be as good as her when I grow up. And her videos are just so great. She does such a great job. She never makes mistakes. All right, so there we go. So I got it all the way around. So I've reduced the bulk. And now I'm gonna go ahead and reach in here and turn it inside out. Now it's a little tight and having these hemostats will help. But you see it's a hard, um, hard angle to do because it's an angle and I wanna make sure that the band is here. I don't wanna be doing the trimming in the band. So I think when I did this the other day, I did the heel first and it worked better, but I'm gonna try and do this corner first. So um, you, if you can get, I'm gonna do it without the hemostats. If you can get the top, one of the corners through first, the corner that's the farthest away from you through the hole first, then the rest will push through better. And it takes time, you guys. It's, it really does. This is not a time to be hurrying. If you cut your seam, it's not the end of the world. You can glue it up and stitch it. But if you don't wanna have to worry about that, then take your time and do this and get the opening through. So there's the inside. So now if I grab a hold of that, and this is where the hemostats really help because they are a third hand and you can grab a hold of this easier. Um, I was worried I might have to make that hole a little bigger, but I think it's okay. I may make it just a tiny bit bigger. So this is why I like to test myself because I have all levels of testers um, that I use. And sometimes like I just did, I just do a shout out and I give um, an opportunity to new people, but I don't always get the right feedback I need. So to me, this is a, um, a struggle that's too much and I'd rather open, make that opening a little bit bigger to make it a little easier. The downside, the bigger the opening you make, the more you see that one on the lining. And since the lining closure is on the side of the bag, on this knot at the bottom, it's more obvious. So it's a balance to try and get the turning hole to be not too big that when you look inside the bag, you see it and it looks terrible, but still big enough to turn it adequately. And it is coming, it's taking a minute, but it's coming. And it's taken me longer because I'm trying to do it in front of you. And normally I would pull this up to my waist and just start working it that way and it's easier. So, but because I'm trying to do it in front of you and pulling it away from me, I don't have the same leverage in my arms and hands to pull it. So keep that in mind. So when you're doing it, it'll probably be a little bit easier for you than what you're seeing me right now. And you just keep working and you're gonna turn it. Um, sorry, I need a drink. You're turning it um, wrong side to lining side and then we'll flip it lining side to right side. All right, almost there. I hope you can't hear that my son has whatever he's watching too loud. See that dog, we put her in the cage and she's quiet now. I think she just needed a nap. And sometimes I have to tell her to go take a nap and she'll go in her cage. I'm not even kidding you guys. I can tell her nap and she goes straight to her cage. Yeah, when we try to call her in when she's being a Brad outside, she won't come. So she acts, she's pretty selective of where what she wants to learn, what commands she will listen to. All right, there we go, and I did not tear it. So that's awesome. Okay, so now, just work through. I find if you push all the corners and stuff out first when the lining is here, that you end up, when you have to turn it the lining side in, and then push, everything pushes better. So just my experience. 
and this should be big enough to hold a phone, although I'm not so sure. Hey, Grayson, can you bring me the um, pink iPhone, please? What? Can you bring me the pink iPhone? The what? The pink iPhone? This is where the hemostats are good. You can get in here and push out. I, don't know the where it is. I thought it was just on the bed. I don't know. Okay, can you bring my work phone? I think this should fit a six by or a larger iPhone. Let's just see with my. I can't show you since I'm using my iPhone to record this, and the child in there can't find the other iPhone. The um seven and the ten and the eight and the eleven are not much difference in size. Okay, so there now I got all of that out, and you can go ahead and take the time now if you want to close this. And then I just glue it and clip, clip it closed. So you put the glue on this thick side that's sewn in and then there like that and clip it closed. But I like to wait until I'm all the way done turning it in case I need to reach in there and push out the corners. So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it out to the right side. I was getting ready to do this video and I realized, darn it, I need a name for the demonstration because um, I don't need a stocking zipper bag. And so I'm gonna have a group of foster mama friends, foster adopt mama friends. And I like hurried up and posted and I'm like, hurry up, <laughs> I need a name, <laughs> who wants one? <laughs> uh, thankfully we have enough traffic there that somebody saw it right away and she claimed it. So Matilda is gonna get this little bag and she's gonna love it. I'll have to send her a little lanyard strap too. See, so I'm still pushing it and it takes a while because that vinyl down there. So even though we had it the right way, well, this can be really tight. I'm gonna double check it, but my measurements <laughs> said it should fit the larger iPhones in it. So now I'm gonna put the hemostats in there. Now do be careful because this um, sparkle canvas is thinner, so you could poke a hole through it. So be very careful when you're pushing out your corners. So I'm just reaching in there and you can see if it's pushed out all the way because you'll be able to see the seam lines. There we go. And see them round it as you can rub, rub the roundness of whatever your device is that is round along inside into the seam. And it actually works better if you get inside the lining, which is why I didn't close it yet. I don't need to worry about it because I um, I got a good roundness through the lining. But if you're not, then reach that pokey device or hemostat or bamboo screw or whatever you're doing, reach it underneath the lining in the hole. And I just got my hand in there because it was not turning. So now I can get in there better. All right. And this is definitely gonna need pressed because it's a small bag. So it was a lot harder to turn out. So it got very wrinkly. All right, there we go. I'm off camera, I'm sorry. And again, I'm just poking out the corners and it's rounding out nicely because I did all that trimming. And then rub the thing along the edge and side. And I'm not gonna iron this until I heel, close the heel or the turning hole. I have some of those strands here. And then the other thing you can do is rub this between your fingers to roll the seams out. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. And then the little corners here, and I promise you I was gonna show you how this looks different since we didn't do the back top stitching. Push your pointing device in there and push that little tab out and about. You kind of just, it's hard to describe until you feel it, but you feel for it in there and that tab will push up a little bit so you can see it a little, see that? And then you do the same thing over on this side. I find it's easier on this side with the zipper pull. And sometimes if you pull this closed a little bit, it's actually even easier. These zippers are from 
Cam Snaps, if I didn't mention that in the beginning. I love them. These are number three. And they are um, rainbow faux metallic. You can see I'm just working it in there. Now you can see the tab. They're not real metallic. They're nylon or polyester. All right. And there's our completed bag. And now you see how the top, you don't see any of the fabric over it. And remember the one with the top stitching where we did the top stitching on the back. See the difference in how that looks? So those are your choices. I don't think it needs the top stitching and you could always take this to your sewing machine and top stitch it yourself. But it just depends on what you like. And then I'm gonna go off camera one second and go see if I can find that phone real quick. I need to get a, a, a pretend phone that's the same size that I can use for these demonstrations. Guys, excuse me. Just one minute, guys. Guys, I hope you kept yourself entertained for those 30 seconds I was gone. Here's the deal breaker. Is it going to fit? And he has a pop socket on here, so I don't know if that's going to work or not. Ta-da! Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. I was worried it wasn't going to fit. So then you just put one in your little lanyards, or in this case, I'm gonna put this little strap on here. These straps are available, or will be available on my Etsy. There you go. How cute is that? Now, this isn't really big enough for a crossbody, so I wouldn't recommend putting straps up here. Um, but I think it's adorable just as it is and I hope Matilda likes it oh uh, you can ask me which font this is and I don't remember um, it's a design by Juju one I'm pretty sure but I will look it up and see but there we go the finished bag I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, give me a thumbs up if you did thumbs up I'm not really good at doing all that pointing stuff to the subscribe down here or down there, wherever it's at. It's a red button, you'll see it. And help me get to that 1,000 mark so I can start doing YouTube lives and we'll be very happy. Um, Grayson usually comes out and does a little bit of a intro and an exit, but he's not today, he's busy. Stay up there. He doesn't wanna stay up there. I wanna be able to hang it so you guys can see it, how cute it is. But that's the best we're gonna do, stay there. Stay. There it goes. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you have a good afternoon. Um, this probably will not be uploaded until after Thanksgiving, but have a great holiday season. Bye-bye.